Over this past year, there is just a simple, modest phrase uh, that really captured the, the world's attention, and this is transition away. Uh, these two words that came out of COP28, uh, they really didn't meet our expectations, perhaps, and they might not have been the two words that we were hoping to hear, but they really marked a pivotal moment. And this is that it sent an unmistakable signal to both investors and to corporations that our transformation is inevitable, right? So what do we need to do? What we need to do is we need to follow the money. And that is precisely what we're going to do today. And when that happens, we're gonna find that we still have such a long way to go. This past year, fossil fuel subsidies, they surged to a record $7 trillion, right? So this is something that is more than the GDP of Germany, Japan, and India combined. This is dwarfing the investments that we need to make in our ecological and energy transition. So what this requires, Maeve, is more than just profound rhetoric. What we need is we need to fundamentally shift the way we operate. We need large-scale investments into our financial institutions because the very survival of the organizations within this room rely upon it. So what we need to do is we need to shift away and evolve from exploiting nature, and we need to go towards protecting it. What we also need to do is we need to adopt and adapt to Europe's fast-changing regulatory landscape. Mm -hmm. Because Maeve, what we need to do is we need to move the money. We need to move the money to ensure we can stay adapted to a nature and climate positive environment for the future. We need to move the money to ensure a climate resilient future for generations to come. And as someone based in Brussels, I'm following very carefully uh, all that legislation um, being yeah. cooked up there. Fascinating times, but also, of course, very challenging, but very necessary. Can you tell our participants here, what should they expect from today's program? You know. I think what we might want to start to look at is what is the theme of today's program about? And if you look just behind me, let's take a look at the structure. Financial ingenuity is what brought the Eiffel Tower to life. It is the classic first example of when we have private investments and public investments working together in what is the classic first example of modern project finance, interestingly enough. And what is the result of this? Well, the result is innovative engineering innovative architecture, and financial wins for both sides. It also marks a pivotal moment. It is an empowering symbol of what it takes to work together to get to real world solutions. And that's why I'm so excited that today we're gonna be launching the CDP Europe report with our partners, Oliver Wyman, and it is going to highlight the financial gridlocks that we are facing, which are underpinning our climate and nature crisis. So what we need to do is we need to activate everybody in this room to be the architects of our sustainable future to move the money. And what should people here look out for then? on today's program. You know, today's program is gonna be a fascinating one. And we're gonna start out by hearing about the financial hurdles that businesses and cities face and the real world solutions that all of you can put into place to adapt and find solutions to fund your future. We're then gonna zoom out, Maeve, and we're gonna take a look at the underpinnings of our economy and what we need to do to structurally fix them and lay the foundations for a more resilient tomorrow. But what we really need to do is we need to ask ourselves some really fundamental questions. How can we transform traditional business models? How could we move capital to fund an innovation for technology within our future? And how can regulation create the right environment for investments? And what does this mean? What does this challenging economic and geopolitical moment finally mean for our ability to do what? To finally move the money. And where does CDP sit in this discussion? You know, that's a great question. And when I think about it, uh, if you look to COP28, it hosted the first ever global stock take this past year. And what CDP does is we actually stock take every single year for non-state actors. This past year, we had 23,000 organizations disclose their environmental data. This represents 90% of European market capitalization. This is all your data. And your data is a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool to increase access to capital. It drives business efficiency and ensures that we can comply with regulation. But all we need to do to ensure that we stay on track for this transition, do you know what we need to do, Maeve? We just need to look at the CDPA list leaders because you all, 
You all are what is going to make this possible because we need all companies. We need all investors and financial institutions and cities to step up because you all are best prepared to move the money. And then from there, well, guess what? CDP data, it's going to continue to shine a spotlight. It's going to show us what is possible and empower all of the organizations in this audience today to be able to look around the corner, see what's coming next, and move beyond regulation that can only take us so far. Because what we need to do is to ensure that you are the designers, you are the builders of a more sustainable future towards a path that will create an economy that is net zero and nature positive. I'm feeling very inspired. Are you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> wow. Any final words for our audience? Yeah. Well, you know, before I get to my final thoughts, there's just a few things that I need everybody in this audience to do today. First of all, enjoy yourself. Enjoy the view. Enjoy the change now space. Enjoy the food. Enjoy connecting with colleagues and embarking on new conversations and picking up on old ones. And if you see anyone in the room today wearing a red badge, that is a CDB staff member, so stop them, say hello to them, ask them how they're creating an economy that works for people on planet, because this is a problem that is not going to be easy to fix. So what we need to remember is it starts with innovative financial thinking. Without actionable insights from data and without the power of partnerships, this view behind me would look very different. So I have a challenge for each and every one of you in the audience today, to all the companies out there, what we need you to do is shift your spending to more sustainable investments and more sustainable solutions to create secure supply chains. To all of the investors within the room, the financial institutions, we need you to collaborate together to spread the risk. And finally, to all the policymakers, to the cities, the local governments in the room, we need you to create the right conditions to scale up green investments. This is going to be pivotal because without all of you, without your work, if we do not move the money fast enough, the view behind me is going to look very different. And I think what is at stake is much more than just a monument. We are running out of time, Maeve, because the time is now. The Earth's future is in our hands. Maeve, humanity's future is in our hands. The time is now. It's time to move the money.